Hi, Ipsita. Good morning. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is my voice clear? Okay, then we will start. We are talking about Route 53, right? So let's go to Route 53. And Route 53 is global service. It's not a regional one. And we have one hosted zone which we created yesterday. And two records when we create uh, uh, this uh, Route 53, those two records. Uh, will appear here. NS record and SOE record. Name server record and start of authority record. Now let us create another uh, record of uh, A record, type is A record only, but routing policy, we will change this to uh, weighted, we already discussed geo -laten uh, geolocation, latency, failover, and multi value answer are there. So, let us uh, do any one of this. We'll try with geolocation. So, I want a location. That means traffic coming from this location will be routed to this server only. So we have to say Mumbai, let's say. India. See, location is India. Health check is optional. Here we can create multiple records. So, record ID. Uh, this is our first record. So, one is the record ID. And then uh, here we have to give the value of our server. We already discussed this geolocation routing policy. Geolocation routing policy. Uh, considers location as a priority. Where uh, is the request coming from? Origin of the request. So if origin of the request is India, then the traffic has to be routed to only certain servers. So here, let us not use the Indian server. We will use the Sydney server. Mm, let's uh, go here. City. So yesterday we have created two instances. One is Linux instance, one is Windows instance in this region. Windows instance we have created uh, uh, as a client device. Why? Because we have uh, created a private hosted zone not a public hosted zone. And within this private hosted zone, a client server, everything has to be in AWS network only. So the domain name which we have registered is valid within the AWS network. So, so let us start these instances, start instance.
so in this scenario what's happening uh, the request with the client device is in sydney region that means request origin will be sydney so let us go to route 53 console and change it to australia so if request origin is australia then route the traffic to let us give the server uh, ip address and also in mumbai region Meanwhile, um, we will connect to our Windows server, which is in Sydney region. It's a uh, it game running. So let's start the HTTP service. Still stop instances. It's running here. Connect. We'll connect through browser. Service HTTP start. Now the HTTP service is running, and this is the public IP address. Uh, test page is coming. It seems like uh, index dot html is not there. At this level, we have created this um, index dot html. Let's go and check this uh, instance in Mumbai region. Wait, I have created this. Uh, use the EC2 Mumbai keypad. And also, we have created this index dot html yesterday. So why it's not there? Yeah, 
anyways let us do it uh, once again Can't open file. Why? Because I have logged in as regular user. So I should log in as group user. index.html just give me a minute guys the letters escape i we are in insert mode Okay, let's say uh, this one is the number server. Now let's see. And now we will go to route 53 and add this server's public IP there. So usually people use the servers within the same location. And what we are doing is whenever a request origin is Australia, that has to be routed to this server. And we also talked about some use cases where it is useful when you are writing your web content in different languages. Uh, or uh, if, if we uh, have uh, any currency related uh, things in the web content. So uh, based on that, we can route traffic uh, based on location. So requests coming from the location certain locations you can map to the certain service. So create record. Change uh, the Sydney here.
and the Windows instance. So this one, Windows instance, connect. DP client. So copy this password. Go here, remote desktop client. For Windows users connecting uh, to Windows instance, they can do from uh, the command prompt. Uh, like uh, the RDP will be already available. For Mac users, they need to install this remote uh, desktop client software. I think this one, this one uh, we have used it last time. 15.20, let's check its public IP. Uh, it's uh, showing the DNS name, anyway, let's try. Maybe this one. Uh, let's try with this one. It's in Mumbai region, so not this one. Let's download remote desktop file. Then Copy password from here. Get password. Okay, this is our client device. Why? Because the DNS uh, name which we have registered is valid in only AWS network. Only AWS EC2 servers um, can reach the clients through that DNS name. We already discussed how to bring in the public DNS names also. So let's go here. Copy my DNS name, route 53, oh, here it is. So this is the uh, domain name which we have registered in the private hosted zone and we have uh, uh, also added an A record and routing policy is geolocation. That means based on the request origin, it will map to the servers. We can add one more records also. So let us copy this DNS name. Go here. Right, this web page is coming from Mumbai server. Let us change this now. Let us delete. Delete record. And uh, create a uh, same record with the uh, geolocation routing policy. We will change the server now. 
let us go to sydney region and we are already here we have one more instance linux already we have created this index.html but let's check slash html folder list list it's there so let us start this http service There is a fail to start HTTP service. The name of the free desktop policy kit was not provided by any. Uh, so sorry. Um, let's use sudo and check. Or let's change the location instead of uh, starting it from HTML. Let's uh, change the path. Also use sudo. Now we have started this and uh, copy the public IP of this. So this is web page coming from the Sydney server. Now go to route 53. This time I'll create a record uh, with the same geolocation routing policy. and giving the public IP of a Sydney server and location. We have our client device in the Sydney region. So Australia is our origin of request, a request origin, right? Here it is. And record ID one, I have deleted the previous record, so create records. So done, added record, now let's go and check. So this is our, let's refresh. So why this happens is because of TTL, uh, time to live. Uh, the browser as well as the DNS resolver will cache the previous mapping. Uh, previously we have mapped this domain name to certain server's IP address, right? That is uh, located in Mumbai region, Mumbai server. And uh, the time to live is around 300 seconds. We have not changed the default value. So around uh, 300 seconds, it, it will uh, have that in its cache memory. So due to that, we are getting the same response. Let us try it in uh, private mode. Go here in private browsing. So now it's done. Now we have mapped. Uh, when the reports are coming from this uh, Australia region, they have to be mapped to the Sydney server. So this is uh, our geolocation routing policy. Now let's go back to Route 53. And also I'll open my presentation.
so simple routing policy let us uh, recap once again simple routing policy uh, here it just maps uh, the dns name with the ip addresses when you are using ip addresses we use a record we already discussed this whereas if you want to use any subdomains in cases when you are using elastic load balancers if you want to use an s3 bucket or um, your cdn networks in aws we call them as cloud front then you have to create a cname record for ip addresses we use a record and we have an another option of using aliases if you want to bring in these services uh, to route 53 bring and attach to route 53 AWS has providing uh, alias also alias records. Alias in alias records, you can use endpoints of S3, endpoints of uh, ELB, um, these kind of things. So coming back to routing policies, simple routing policy. Simple routing policy is very simple as name itself suggests. It just maps DNS names with the uh, given IP addresses. and here the limitation is you cannot create more than one record there should be only uh, one simple routing policy for a hosted zone given hosted zone and next weighted routing policy we discussed this you can divide the traffic uh, like uh, say in this scenario 30% of the traffic goes to uh, this region this region servers and 70% of the traffic will go here you can divide the traffic using weighted routing policy and here you can have multiple records and like uh, in simple routing policy the weighted routing policy and other policies also allows multiple records and a latency routing policy so first we will talk about the geolocation routing policy which we have uh, done just now that means based on the location where request is coming from uh, based on that we can map to the servers and same thing with latency routing policy so it is similar to uh, geolocation routing policy if you do lab also you may not experience much difference why because it calculates latency obviously when it calculates latency the nearest server uh, latency reaching the nearest server latency will be less so latency is priority here and if you we do lab also most of the times we will get the nearest region suppose i have a sydney server and i also have a mumbai server if origin of request is sydney then obviously latency will be less if it is routed to sydney server so it appears to be like geolocation routing policy but latency is priority uh when uh, we can experience this is suppose sydney server is so busy handling lot of traffic even though the origin uh, request uh, uh, the origin of the request is from the sydney but still uh, it uh, aws calculates latency if the, it is routed to sydney server then uh, uh, latency is going to be high so it will route the traffic to some other region some other nearest region where server is not so busy so here uh, latency is more important than location so that is latency routing policy now we have a failover routing policy let's uh, create one this failover routing policy analogy is very much similar to elastic load balancer uh, we will have a primary server secondary server and it is also very popular and in times uh, where you need disaster recovery uh, at route 53 level the one option is failover routing policy say for example uh, i have a web server and some natural calamity happened in that particular region i have it in mumbai region say for example uh, due to some natural ca calamity the servers are down the aws data center itself down but whatever is the reason 
within 15 minutes i want my server up and running so then what we can do is we can have a secondary server and uh, opt for failover routing policy and we don't want to look into it uh, without any uh, manual inter intervention so here uh, automatically this routing policy has to route the traffic to secondary server so let us create this failover routing policy go to our console delete this record create record we will change the time to leave to 60 seconds now the the minimum can be 60 and maximum can be up to 2 days and routing policy failover routing policy now uh, health check even though they say optional uh, we need to add health check here now one more thing it asks failover record type so let's choose failover record first let us enter uh, this one let us call this server mumbai server as our primary server so copy and put it here this is my primary server so failover record type is primary health check is not optional now health check uh, is not optional why because it's failover and uh, your policy uh, has to monitor the health of the server then it comes to know whether server is working fine or not so health check is mandatory where you can create this health check in route 53 console itself so let us create a health check see uh, dns management traffic management availability monitoring domain registration we talked about domain registration we can register domain here in aws itself and dns management the one where we create uh, records so that is dns management you create hosted zone and then you can configure your records that is dns management now availability monitoring so here we can create health checks so let us create a health check um and the name this is a primary check what to monitor uh, endpoint status of other health check status of cloud alarm let's keep this endpoint monitor endpoint yes we want to monitor by ip address protocol is http only address is this one so same like our load balancer right uh if you uh, compare it with load balancer the details which we are giving the port number the path path let's say index.html is the path right or we cannot mention any path by default it's index.html only we can leave also uh port number is 80 host name I'll go to route fifty-three here. So the 
This is our host name. And we have advanced configuration. Uh, fail failure threshold to treat server as a unhealthy one. Um, it has to make at least three successive consecutive attempts. And request interval. Uh, same like ALB, it will send requests and check for response. If response is not 200, which is success. If it is an uh, error code, 400, 404, 500, we have so many error codes, right? If anything like that, uh, it has to consider server to be a failure one or unhealthy one after three consecutive attempts. And also while sending the request, the time interval is 30 seconds. So let us make it fast. Uh, we will keep it as 10 seconds. Uh, string matching, no. And uh, other things, no need. We can leave them. And these are health checker regions where the request is going. So these are the regions. Uh, they have their health checker uh, uh, clients. So which uh, ping requests and check whether these servers are healthy or not. So this is the URL simply. Uh, using this URL, it's going to check whether our primary server is healthy or not. So let's say next. Uh, create alarm at this point of time if you want alarm. Why? Because suppose if your server is failed for some reason, maybe not always natural calamitous, some maintenance is going on, your server is experiencing some downtime, networking issues, internal issues within the application. So there could be many other reasons. As a manager, as an admin, if you want to know when server fails, if you if you want to get a notification, then yes, create alarm and use SMS topic, you'll get a notification, SMS or email notification, right? We already talked about SMS. Uh, create alarm, so automatically it will create an alarm. Let us also, um, existing sms we don't have any so let us say new sms topic uh, this is route uh, 53 alert right so let us call it as route 53 alert that is our topic name recipient email address Create health check. So alarms uh, not yet and status is unknown. It takes some time. This is, this is the server we have given and yes it's working fine uh, so our health check has to be okay or healthy still it is unknown like we have given this one. Okay, uh, that is edited. It has to be 13 for some reason. Uh, I have not copied one. Let's edit it. Edit health check. Uh, the IP address is 13 dot two thirty. So let's add one here. Forty seven dot two hundred and twenty. Save. Yeah, now it is healthy. 
uh, primary health check. And let us go on, add it to our routing policy, create record. Then my primary server. This is the primary server. And PTL, let us give it only 60. Uh, seconds is time to leave PTL and routing policy is a failover routing policy and uh, record type is primary health check it automatically appears here record ID one create record. And let us also create secondary policy. Sydney region. This one is from Mumbai region. Uh, let us go to instance and copy the IP address of this one. Public IP. Copy. This is our secondary server. Time to leave. Let us decrease it to 60 seconds. Routing policy, failover, and now record type is secondary. Health check is optional here. If you want to track health status of secondary server also, we can create one more health check and leave it here. But for primary, it is not optional. Uh, since it's a secondary server, record type is secondary, health check is optional. So let us leave it and record ID is two. Um, Record ID is for identification. It's like a unique identity for your record since we can have multiple uh, records, right? And, uh, other than simple routing policy, in any other routing policy, you can have multiple records. So this is like a roll number. You can give a number or you can give a name, anything. It can be your load balancer name. It can be any other name. It's just an identification to your record. It's a second record, create records. Primary record, secondary record are there. Let's go here and test it now. So by default, the primary one is a Mumbai server. Mumbai server is the primary one. Let's close the browser. Your browser will also cache uh, the IP address of the server previously mapped in its cache memory. So let us uh, open new session in private browsing. See, now it is Mumbai server. This is my primary server. Let us go and stop this server. Stop this instance. So 
stop. And uh, let us check the health uh, status. So when it becomes unhealthy, automatically we have a secondary routing policy. This failover routing policy will route to secondary uh, server, which is Sydney server. Okay, healthy 16 minutes ago. Now alarm has uh, become okay. Why? Because I have stopped the instance and it's still server has not yet become unhealthy. When alarm becomes okay and then it becomes in alarm, I'll also get a notification. I have not yet received any notification too. Here. See, this web page is coming from Sydney server. Automatically, it has routed to the secondary server, secondary routing policy. Let's uh, go here, route 53, and refresh this page once. Now it has been unhealthy. Alarm is also true. And uh, when this primary health check fails, that means primary server is unhealthy. So your routing policy immediately routes traffic to the secondary server. Clear guys, any doubts? So that is failure routing policy. Let us go to hosted zone. The failure routing policy. Let us delete this. And we have one more routing policy. Right, uh, we talked about weighted routing policy, geolocation, latency, failure, multi value answer. So, this is also like. Uh, Multi-value answer, a routing policy is like a, a load balancer only. Uh, it, it works on load balancer concept. So let me show you here. Multi-value routing policy. See this multi-value routing policy, when you uh, this multi-value routing policy, we can use it if, when you want to use multiple values for a DNS query. So up to eight healthy records are written for each multiple value. See, if, if you observe this picture, this appears like same load balancer. So load balancer, we know anyway uh, how it works. It uh, equally distributes traffic among the servers. We already know that. And one more job, what your elastic load balancer will do is health check. It will health check each and every server. And it will route traffic to only healthy instances. Same thing with multi-value routing policy at route 53 level. Here it will uh, check the health status of each and every server. Suppose uh, up to eight um, you can do eight health checks uh, you can configure 
so if any server is unhealthy it is not able to respond back it will not route to that server so uh, you may ask like uh, uh, failover routing policy is the same thing so yes failover routing policy we have a primary record and secondary record only two options are there when primary fails you have an option of secondary whereas here in multi value routing policy you can have up to eight healthy records for each multi value query right so here you can see uh, this is first set of record in the first set of record what is happening so eight healthy records means we have an option of adding uh, more than uh, one server for uh, one record so let's say in the first record i have four servers in the routing policy then it will uh, does the health check for all the four servers if there is any one faulty a uh, server or unhealthy server it will not route traffic to that server it will route traffic to other servers so that is multi value routing policy so uh, even without health check also it checks let us create this multi value routing policy uh, multi value answer time to leave we will reduce it to 60 seconds record id 1 health check is optional and i am giving both the server ip addresses here this is server number 1 and server number 2 server which i have stopped here let's start it once again start it and also copy the ip address not yet assigned the same ip address again right it's in the 200 video this time it's 230 we just copy this Set connect. Start HTTP service. And also copy this IP address. This is Sydney. Yeah. And uh, connect to instance. This is Mumbai. Let's delete and do it once again. First, uh, Mumbai's public IP, and then Sydney server. The 
this one. Yes, and now what multi value uh, routing policy will do? It will check health status of these two and uh, returns uh, and checks if, if uh, one server is healthy, then it will stop routing to that server and it will consider the other server. Like this, we can have eight records and in each record you can have multiple uh, servers. So like this, we can have uh, eight records. So this is my first record. Like this, we can have eight uh, health, health check records. Dab, dab, dab. So health check is optional. Let's create a record. Error occurred. Uh, why? One resource record. So there has to be different records for uh, the, here uh, you cannot enter multiple things. Now let's create. Create one more record and this time Previous record, let me check once. The previous record we are using for this one, and this time we use this create record. Time to live sixty seconds. Routing policy multi value answer record ID to create records. Health check is optional, so let's create record. So now by default, it's uh, routing it's to Sydney server. Let us go and stop Sydney server. This one. Why I have stopped the server? It's saying this page can't be reached. Let us refresh once again. Uh, this web page is coming from Sydney server. Let us refresh once again. Stop this, but still, let's go and check. We have stopped this. But due to that browser cache, still we are getting that Sydney service response. We can't reach this page. Let's refresh once again.
the server and check whether uh, we have started this HTTP service. Is it working or not? Watching. I'm also on Route 53. Did mm. it record? This is Mumbai service routing for us. Somewhere when, when we stop in the start, uh, what happens? It will assign new IP, public IP. So unless we opt for elastic IP, it will assign a dynamic IP, right? So let's go here. Edit it. And save. And this server is not running. So your, our multi-value uh, routing policy has to check. Uh, if it is not working, then it should route all the traffic to this. Let's go here. Close it, open uh, and also in private mode. In private browsing. Now it's coming, right? So now what happens uh, is uh, the advantage of multi-value routing policy. Now it will not use the other server at all because it is unhealthy. Until it becomes healthy again, uh, it will not route any traffic to Sydney server. So if it is weighted geolocation or any other policy, they, they, they uh, route the traffic irrespective of whether it's healthy or unhealthy unless you opt for health check. So that is not the case with multi-value routing policy. If one server fails, uh, it checks. If, a, uh, if one server fails, then the, all the traffic will be routed to other servers. Clear? Any doubts? Okay then, uh, see you tomorrow.